Well, guys, it's here. <laughs> the new saw has arrived. Oh, my goodness. You, you guys thought I could bring you some great projects before. This saw is really going to help me up my game. I mean, the features on it are just, <clears throat> are just that much better than the, uh, the, the, uh, bleh, the Dremel I've been using. But the Dremel's a good saw. This is a better saw. So let's get to it. This pretty pretty yellow box here holds my brand new DeWalt 788 scroll saw. I mean, it literally just showed up a couple minutes ago. So let's see. I'm grab a knife. Knife. Knife? Yes, we have a knife. Okay. Uh. Alright, let's see what we got here. Well, besides the saw. I mean. <laughs> I tell you, this got here a lot faster than I thought it would. The original place that my father was going to get it from said that there was a recall and there was all sorts of, uh, of uh, restock issues and all that. And He called up DeWalt and they said, no, I don't know who told you that. So, I'm not going to name any names because I'm not here to create any enemies. I'm just saying... It's here, so happy times are here again. Okay, I think that's everything. Don't worry, I'll pull you guys off the camera stand like I always do in just a second. Get all the packages and stuff out of the way before we look at this bad boy. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. So I do have to put the table on it myself. Got it. Alright, so, as you've heard me rustling around with plastic, there it is. Now, this is my first time owning such a nice saw. I mean, I, I had, like I said before, I have worked on my father's 30th anniversary Excalibur over there, but this is, this is a slightly different animal. Uh, um, unlike the, um, brain, function, unlike the Excalibur where the whole, uh, blade system tilts to give you your angle for, uh, tapered and angled cuts. Uh, on this one, this one's similar to the Craftsman where the it's the table that tilts and the blade stays uh, vertical. So, anywho, well, what it looks like is I'm going to have to um, set up another table to put this on so that this thing doesn't scratch the crap out of my, my father's workbench. Uh, <clears throat> I'll pause you guys here and continue the video in a second. Now, one of the things that I'm absolutely going to love about this saw compared to the Dremel saw is this right here. This this flexible, positionable air hose. The one on the Dremel, um, it does the job. It blows the chips away from the blade, no problem. But you have to unscrew it, lift it on that metal post every single time you want to change holes on your project. This, I can just set it, forget it, and go for it. So that works. Now, this gigantic cast iron table, which is a, grr, a lot heavier than I thought it would be, I still have to attach that to that carefully. I mean, now, now granted, it's a simple procedure. It's just two screws uh, through here and here to attach the table. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to keep the uh, part holder on the saw or not, but uh, I'll figure I'll figure that out after I start using it. Uh, I'm actually still working on a project, the uh, 68 Corvette uh, convertible 
scroll art. So I'm going to finish that project on the Dremel saw because I'd, my father had a very good point. You don't want to learn a brand new saw on a commissioned piece because that is actually ordered by a customer. It's not something we normally make. Um, now, so I have to assemble. Scroll saw assemble. Okay, yeah, that was bad. All right, guys. Be right back. Okay, now... This uh, scroll saw came with a tool that I have absolutely no idea what it's for. Because the instructions don't mention the tool. And it's this little flat metal piece. It looks like a attempt at a screwdriver or a shim for something. But I read through the entire quick start instructions and it's not there. So I guess I'll have to figure out what it's for. Urgh. All right, let's see what we got here. So we're up under the saw attaching the table. And as I get down on my knees <laughs> and pray to the scroll saw guys to be nice to me. All right, let's see what we got here. Hopefully I line this sucker up right. There it goes. Okay, I just had to get the first screw to find the threads and get that happy-go-lucky thing in but not tight so I can line up the other one. Okay, so that's in. I'm gonna go around the other side of the table. Okay. I know. This may not be all that exciting for you guys, and I apologize for that, but this is extremely exciting for me. I'm going to baby this thing Ugh, for as long as I can. I think I got started. I may have to dig into my father's tea handle branch. Nope, it didn't start. It fell back out. Okay. Whew, my knees do not like hitting up and down from the floor. Let's try this again, shall we? <coughs> oh, look, and it just happens to be the right color handle. Yeah, I know, somewhere. But you guys know this. Aha! We have contact with threads. So let's get up in there and see what we can do. Well, they literally designed this saw so that you can just barely get an Allen wrench in there to attach the table. Well, I mean, how often do you do you replace the saw or the table on a saw? So I can see I can see why they made it this way. Those screws are in loose. Okay, what I need to do for now to make sure the table's lined up is toss in a blade, see how it lines up between the two blade clamps. Now, okay, that alignment looks pretty good for the table. It's not exactly dead center yet. Let me massage it a little bit. All right, so that's lined up. Now I can actually tighten everything down. Oh no, fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, come on, you. Don't argue with me. Okay, that's that one. Okay, well, pause you guys here while I figure out why the screw's arguing with me. Okay, searching for signs of life, and everything works. Including the air hose. So, everything's hunky-dory. Everything works right out of the box. It's ready to go. Now I just have to make a space for it in my room, so I can learn this bad boy. But uh, before I do that... 
I need still need to uh, build that stand, which is hiding in that little yellow box in the corner over there, over by the sander. Well, DeWalt went and dropped the ball on this one, guys. Uh, the stand that they sent my father um, is missing both of its front legs and one of the two supports to actually hold the saw to the stand. So that's fairly useless, but um, we'll deal with it. We'll figure out something. Hopefully they'll write it and send us a new one. So I have the t I have the uh, stand that I've been using for my Dremel saw, so that's not a problem. I can I can just use that table, and everything will be hunky dory. I'll figure it out. But don't worry, guys. I'm going to be bringing you um, the first project on the new saw as soon as I can. I'm going to take some time, do some simple cuts, and get used to how the saw reacts to uh, to wood and to work and to different types of blades before I get back on the convertible Corvette. And I will bring that video, guys, to you as soon as I can as well. Uh, but all in all, I'm a little disappointed in DeWalt for not sending a complete product to a customer. But um, the saw itself is perfect. The saw is fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. So I'm going to get that into my room, get the Dremel out of, well, get the Dremel out of the way, and get this saw set up and do some practice cuts. And all right, guys? Okay, you guys are going to hear a lot of background noise because there are some kids playing in the neighborhood outside my window. But uh, those two screws, right, let's see if I can get my finger. Those two screws right there that are very close to each other, that's where the uh, light attaches that uh, this big guy here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah. And I'm very good in this lighting, but you'll see it once I start bolting it on. I have to remove those screws so that I can uh, get the light attached. Now, where the heck did I put the Allen wrench? <sighs> I swear, guys, there are times that I would lose my head if it was not attached. I have the bulb. I have no Allen wrench. I have put it down somewhere. I will be right back. The uh, shop light is installed. I still need to adjust some things to make it all happy. Uh, they use some kind of proprietary screw to mount this light, so um, you have to uh, my brain function. You have to use their supplied tool to mount the light or you're pretty much screwed. It's kind of it looks like it could you could use a torx head bit to do it, but I didn't have the right size one, so I'm just gonna deal with it as it is. Now I have to shift some lighting around in the room because the lamp, while very bright, is a spotlight compared to the area light that I was using. Uh that big magnifying light on the uh Dremel. So, I'm going to do a couple of test cuts on that piece of half inch poplar sitting on the table. Uh, it came with a couple of couple of really cheesy number three non reverse skip tooth blades. I'll get some I'll get some test cuts in, see what I can do, and be right back. Well, guys, the saw is set up. Everything's running. I've leveled the table with a neat little trick. I wish I could remember the person that I learned this from on YouTube so that I could give them credit for it, but basically it was a long time ago, like back when I just started scrolling, um, almost two years ago now, um, learned a neat little trick for leveling a scroll saw table uh, to find out where zero really is. What you do is you take a thick piece of wood and you cut a line uh, into the face of the block and then once you're done you don't have to cut in any any deeper than enough to score the face of the block you pull that block behind the blade and however far off one way or the other the blade is from fitting into that slot you just cut you loosen the table and adjust it until the blade lines up with the slot that you cut in the block and that is zero that's 90 degrees for that particular saw now, doesn't work with every with everything, 
but I've noticed with the Dremel and now with the um, DeWalt, it works with both of those saws. So this saw is whisper quiet compared to the Dremel. I mean, I'm gonna cut some half inch walnut scrap that I found, uh, and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. I don't have the blade speed set all that high because I'm still not used to having a variable speed saw yet. Oops, hold on to your feet there. Now this is three quarter inch thick walnut. I was wrong by saying half inch. But to get that level of precision with that little effort, I mean, oops, turn this off, you idiot, before you hit your hand. I'm good to go. I mean, I literally just started cutting with this saw uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago. And this saw has a level of control that that I've just never seen before. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm so used to reaching below the table for the on-off switch that that's gonna take some training to uh, get me back into it, but... Now, I need to figure out where to position this air hose because the way I was using it wasn't exactly working. Let's try that. Initial thoughts. The saw absolutely rocks. Um, the operator, however, has to get used to the, or the new equipment. I'd say it'll work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this will definitely work. Now, it, uh, it did come with this uh, material hold down piece that I had to take off. It was getting in the way of my fingers, so I couldn't get into the work and be very precise with it. So, uh, But learning process nonetheless. And uh, alright guys, here's the new saw, and it just gets better from here. So, as always guys, more to come.